This is one of the best trails. Oh! Whistler Bike Park Green Trails. Not many people have talked about this, but so many people visit Whistler just to go and try mountain biking for the first time. And actually, when you look in the YouTube kind of search bar, you'll see that a lot of people are looking for it. My name is Paul, and I've been riding this bike park for about five oh years now, so I'm pretty familiar with what's going on. Oh my God! Here I am to give a full rundown of Whistler Bike Park Green Trails. The chances are, if you're watching this for the first time, or maybe you're watching it to show someone else that you're gonna to take to the bike park, so what I'm gonna cover is everything from uh, the bike you're gonna take, or the bike that's suitable, rather, to things that happen in the queue, to getting on the chairlift, I'm even going to tell you where to go when you get off the chairlift. It's going to be fully comprehensive. Everything's going to be covered. Well, well, I mean, kind of everything. Well, I'll probably have to make another video after this to really explain everything. Whistler Bike Park is probably the most popular bike park in the world. And honestly, I've, I've been to New Zealand. I've been riding in Europe. I've been to most places. There's no better place for you to try mountain biking for the first time. So I imagine one of the reasons that you might be watching this video as well is that you're not sure if it's gonna be an activity that you're gonna enjoy, but mountain biking has gotta be one of the best sports you can do. So don't worry, I'm gonna tell you why, everything's gonna be fine, and also give you some tips. But if you are going, I've gotta say, number one thing is you should really think about getting a guide. I'm pretty sure they offer some packages where you get your bike rental or your protective gear, and then you have a trained coach, someone that will show you techniques, they'll go in front and take you down. So if you're really unsure, I would highly recommend not just trusting my video, but going and trying one of those. So maybe you have a bike already and you're not sure if your bike's good enough. I'm gonna show you the bike I used and honestly, most bikes will be suitable, but there are a couple of things that you should look out for. Uh, but we'll just have a look at some key features that you need to make sure that you've got. For this video, I used my Short Travel 29er trail bike with an aluminium frame, larger wheels, but not much suspension. It has 130 mm of travel in the front and 115 millimeters of travel in the rear, proving that you don't really need a lot of suspension for the bike park, although more is preferred. I also have powerful disc brakes paired with large disc rotors. If you didn't want to use your own bike, you could rent a downhill bike like this one. Featuring a burly frame that can take a ton of bike park abuse, this bike has around 200 millimeters or eight inches of suspension and will certainly be the most comfortable way of riding the bike park. Let's head to the lift line and talk about how this works. There are two ways of queuing. You can either go up in the singles line on the left, as shown in the arrow, or in the group line on the right. With the lift running fast and four riders going up at a time, the queue at Whistler might seem long, but it moves very quickly. The bonus of using a guide is that you get to skip all the queue and go right to the front. Now there are two ways of loading your bike onto the chairlift. If you're on the far left of the four person chair, like here, you'll be asked to hang your bike on the hook. If you get into some trouble, there are lift attendants that can help you, but most likely you'll find yourself on the right where you load your bike flat. First, get the front wheel on and then focus on pushing this along the track. I grab my saddle and give that a final push to get it on securely. Now when you get on the lift, you should put the bar down, but a lot of people don't. If you are unsure, just ask and no one will have a problem about lowering the bar. This is a fantastic vantage point to see some of the other trails and see some of the other riders in the park, tackling some of the features like the drops on Schleyer or even jumps on A-Line. When you step off the chairlift, grab your bike and head right towards the most well-known green trail. Easy does it. The most beginner-friendly trail in Whistler is Easy Does It. The best part about this trail is the mellow gradient all the way down the mountain. There are zero points where you feel out of your depth or out of control. With long banked corners known as berms, it's the ideal place to start honing your technique. So if you're one coming to Whistler and you're wondering how hard they're gonna be, if you're gonna be scared, if it's gonna be too much, if you go with a guide, they just bring you down this, and it's pretty chill. And you should probably go around the turn, probably. <laughs> with no riders flying down past you, and with only beginner riders on the trail, you are free to go as fast or as slow as you wish. There are features like this corner, which allow you to go up high or as low as you like, giving you complete control and allowing you to progress. Okay, so, the legs of it, part way down, you go left, 
This is Golden Triangle. Golden Triangle is listed on trail forks as a blue trail. However, the bike park sign here says it's green. From what I recall, there are a couple of technical features and it's a little bit harder than easy does it. Woo! Jump to the side, there'll be little kicks, kickers. You can practice your jumps. Oh, there's other trails here. These bits off to the side are great, especially if you are the experienced rider coming along. There's some great jibbing fun to be had. Woo! The mellow gradient of Easy Does It is the main selling point, as I mentioned before, but the ability to see what's coming up from afar is also fantastic, allowing the rider to not get surprised by any of the features coming up. I would describe this as pretty chill. There's not much going on. Kind of a fire road. And yeah, I think anyone can do that. So you can carry on left, just down there. Carry on left down easy does it, but mountain biking is all about turns. What we're gonna do is ride the next green trail that I'd recommend, called Crabapple Turns. Crabapple Turns runs adjacent to Crabapple Hits, the biggest jumps in the bike park. Don't worry, there's no chance you'll accidentally get lost and ride over them though. So it's pretty cool that you can come down and ride this one and see like the real experts jumping their bike. The trails in the bike park often interconnect and you can create variation in your laps quite easily. Here Crabapple Turns runs alongside Easy Does It, so if you're in a group and you want to try different lines, you're unlikely to get lost from each other if you break apart. I'm back on to Easy Does It. This junction is where a double back jump trail comes out, called Dirt Merchant. The rope barrier here offers plenty of separation, so as long as you're aware, you'll be perfectly fine. You can carry on, straight on, and it's more of the same. I think just sort of flat roads, easy turns. Or you can dive in left. Now these are the first green technical trails. Del Bocca dissects the Easy Does It trail all the way down. It's not quite right on trail forks and is more like this layout here. You all speak to anyone that rides here, expert or non-expert, and this, when you go right, down Shady Acres, this way, this is one of the best trails. Oh! Got a couple of rocks and it kind of crisscrosses, so this is easy does it again. Shady Acres is off to the right and is a technical route and is quite short as you can see here in the map. Oh no, this is Del Bocca. Oh, I'm so confused. That was Shady Acres. It's labelled as a flow trail, but I would say this should be classed as technical. A technical trail is a trail that generally requires more bike control than a flow trail like easy does it. Oh, this is fresh. Got some rocks, a little bit technical. But this is why this bike park is so good. This has range for all abilities to enjoy. Back on TV does it. This is a tricky turn to make. Back in here. The speed is a bit slower and will require more braking, but perhaps some pedaling to maintain your speed too. Oh yeah. Back across again. Back into Del Bocca. Ah. Oh, sorry, no. <laughs> oh, I'd recommend just around that last turn if you can remember it. Just cruising because it merges back onto Easy Does It here. So we've carried on down Easy Does It. Just there, off to the right, is a really famous A line, which is a jump trail. And it kind of from now on, on the kind of the lower easy does a bit, it just joined back up. So you can go ride with someone that's very, very good. And maybe you want to go and do your own things. And you just kind of meet up as you go down the trail. So well designed. So this is more of easy does it. So bridge, I think it's, yep, rolls down. But it's a beginner trail, but the berms are still really well made. They just, it's just a lot cruisier than the rest of the park. There's the A-line just on the left. Oh, jump. Oh, there we go. So if you've never been mountain biking and you're watching this video, if you think it's going to be a good one to kind of stuff it out, I would completely recommend getting a guide. They'll take you down this, show you all the turns, like dropping the outside foot, looking ahead around the turn. 
to admit that I still need the master, but there we go. Out into the open. Whoa! First day of the season, there's mud everywhere. Whoa! This will dry up. Keep an eye out to your left here. There is another junction that intersects a fast trail, but the culture in Whistler is that faster riders yield to slower riders. So if you're a beginner, it is widely accepted that you have the right way. How good is mountain biking? So this last bit is a bit wide open. It is, I'm pretty sure it's just a fire. Oh no, it's not. It's dead. So this last bit is mainly just a fire road here. And then you can see there's loads of there's Hornet just there. That'll be in a blue trail video. Which I'm probably going to do. But say you're going down and you're saying, oh, I'm probably a bit better at this. I could want to try something harder. There's so many options just to dive off. Oh, you get to ride this tunnel. Oh. There's loads of options just to go off and explore around trying new stuff. There we have it, one lap of Whistler Bike Park Green Trails. Hopefully this video will encourage you to ride some of the other trails in the park and not just repeatedly lap Easy Does It, which is of course perfectly fine, but your bike is designed to do so much more than that. There are other green trails that I will be showing you and also your first blue trails that you can try after you feel comfortable on the greens. So hit the subscribe button to catch the next one. And if you're looking to show someone what mountain biking is like for the first time, consider sharing this video along with them. And hey, why not hit the like button if you enjoyed the video.